think I'm recording. Yes, it seems like I'm recording. Awesome. So this is Brennan Raymond again. Um, and I'm going to talk to you a bit about another commander deck that I, I built. Um, well, I built this one a while ago, as you can see, I've got a few that I've got here. Um, this is the one that I showed you guys last week, Cheap Internet Further. And this week I'm going to be showing you guys Uncommander. But first I thought I'd show you a couple of other handy tools. Um, so this is EDH Red. If you haven't heard of it, definitely use it. Um, so I find this really useful when I'm building a deck. Because what you can do is, if you want just deck ideas, you can go into Commanders and Okay, I'd like to build a three-color deck in Bant, and it will list for you all the different commanders that are there. They will list them by like the number of decks that you use that command, so their popularity. Um, it also shows you the price, uh, which is really handy, um, and then it shows you some staples. Um, some very often used cards in those colors um, and they have this for all all the different color combinations um, but they also have them by set commanders by set don't look at that they also have them by tribe and by theme um, which is pretty cool and if you click on any one of these, so let's click on this one for example. So, oh, okay, I'll have a look at this. And so it shows you what the typical deck kind of looks like. So it says this one, you got to have about 36 land, about 23 creatures. And it shows you some of the signature cards, top cards, creatures, missing sorceries, artifacts, enchantments, playing books, lands. It shows you all the different things that are often put in the deck. Doesn't necessarily mean the best thing to put in deck, but it shows you what other people are doing with them, and that's often really, really helpful um, to give you ideas about what you could do. And you can even make it more specific and go, okay, I want to do her with a planeswalker theme, something which would be interesting. Um, but you could try doing that, um, and it shows you what is typically done with that, apparently, quite heavy in blue. Um, but yeah, that's some of the cool things that you can do with EDH Rec. Um, as you can see, I have a lot of EDH Rec tabs open. These are all of the commanders that I'm like, oh, I'd like to build that at some point. Or uh, still got to open other things. Um, Gatherer is one that I don't use as much, um, but people often use. Um, I tend to like using deck stats a little bit more because it lets you actually build a deck, um, whereas this just has the card search feature. Um, the search engine here is a little bit better. Um, and what I do use Gatherer for, if there's a specific card that I really want to understand a bit better and I want to know like the ruling is on a little bit better, if I don't understand that, then I'll definitely look up here. For example, let's look up there right here. Um, oh, it, it found too many things. Okay, but I think it was stone to come up. Yeah, there we go. Let's just put it there. Okay. Um, so it shows us a lot more stuff here than it does over in there. So it shows me this. So I go, okay, that's handy to know. Um, and you can also see um, sets it is legal in um, and what sets it has been printed in which is always handy to know um, what images it's been printed in apparently um, and also what different people are commenting on apparently no one's commenting on this one at the moment sometimes you see a lot of comments and things sometimes there are none um, but I find that handy now and then for looking up specific cards I don't use it so much for Finding things as such, um, but every now and then I find it useful. So, the one that I, the deck that I'm going to show you guys today is this Uncommander, and it's using 
the unstable set. Now, unstable is not technically legal in Commander, as in, like, it's not obviously illegal, but at the same time, like, Commander is a casual format. So it's really going to be down to um, your playgroup as to what they do and don't let you play. Um, <coughs> um, now, for those who don't know what unstable is, unstable, I'll go back over here to entity itself, entity website, and I'll go back and show you unstable. So, unstable is the third unset, which is basically just fun and a little bit ridiculous, um, as you can kind of see by some of the graphics here. Um, and they do some pretty crazy stuff. Um, but they had two, two major mechanics, if you like, that ran through it. Um, one of those was host and augment, which is this here. So this is a host. Um, host card. Let's see if I can find an augment card. Here's an augment card. Um, and they kind of combine together. Here's another augment card. You kind of put, think like this half joining up with this half here. They kind of lay on top of each other. Um, which is kind of cool. Um, and the other mechanic in it is contraptions, um, which is like an extra deck that you have, which is all artifacts, I believe. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, and I looked through this and I saw so many things, and I'm like, oh, I want to have to go with this. Oh, let's see how this looks. Um, so I pretty much put all the host and all the event cards in there, plus other things that I thought were fun. Um, like, all the cards in this deck are, are from Unstable, except for three. Those three are Sol Ring, <laughs> um, Chromatic Lantern, and the Commander, Ramos, because they're I know five colour commanders in Unstable. Um, and pretty much Ramos is my default five colour commander for when I just want mana, um, because Ramos is so good for mana. and there are not really any good lands in Unstable, so um, this is a terrible deck in terms of mana, but it's just fun. So let, let me let me take you through a bit of what I've got happening here. So I've mainly got augment all the augment cards and all the host cards. Um, I've also got a few cards that do cool things with dice. Um, oh yeah, this is the, these are the full art lands that you have in Unstable, which is really nice. Um, oh, I love this card so much. Animate Library. Enchants your library, or library is now an artifact creature on the battlefield with parent toughness each equal to the number of cards in it. It is still a library. This is just crazy. So much when I play it, it's so ridiculous. Um, this is one of the dice cards, as luck would have it. Whenever you roll a die, put a number of luck counters on as luck would have it, equal to the result. Then, if there are 100 or more luck counters on it, as luck would have it, you win the game. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, and it has hexproof, so it sticks around a little bit longer. Um, Chittering Doom, whenever you roll a 4 or higher on a die, create a 1-1 one, one green scroll creature token. So that's kind of cool. Um, this is just search for a host card or a card with augment, put it into your hand. Um, Crowstorm, create a 1-2 blue bird creature token with flying named Storm Crow, and that has Storm. Now for those who don't know what Storm is, it means when you cast the spell, copy it for each spell cast before this turn. So if you cast it at the end of your turn and you cast a lot of spells beforehand on the turn, then you get to create a lot of 1-2 blue Bird Creature Servant's name Storm Crow. Um, go to jail. This is like a monopoly thing. And if they roll doubles, then they uh, get to get their creature back. Which is kind of cool. Um, Ineffable Blessing. There's actually a few different versions of this card, so I have to choose which version I like. But this version of Flavorful or Bland uh, means that you get, well, you get four cards, which is kind of cool. Um, this one, it deals pie damage to target creature. 
five damage. Um, so it's a little bit more than three. Um, Croc's other thumb. If you would roll a die, instead roll two of those dice and ignore one of those results. But even though, but I'm still rolling two die for as luck would have it. So that's kind of cool. Um, really epic punch. Target creature you control gets plus two, plus two if it's a host or hack or has augment. Then it fights target creature you don't control. Two creatures fighting means that they deal um, their power damage to each other. Um, self preservation, this gets me a land, which is nice in a deck that has like no double land colors. Um, Screw power scheme. Increase the result of each die you roll by two. Yes, please. Staff of the Letter Magus. As it enters the battlefield, choose a consonant other than N, S, R, or T. Whenever a player casts a spell, you gain one life for each time the chosen letter appears in that spell's name. As it suggests, it's kind of suggesting that you choose F. Yeah. But yes. At success, target reach gets plus two plus two until end of turn. If it's a host or has organs, it gains lifelink until end of turn. This is apparently a rabbit with lobster claws, as you do, and spider legs, as you do. Um, super duper death ray, which is an instant that deals four damage to a creature that has trample, which is just amusing. Um, sword of Dungeons and Dragons. The equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has protection from rogues and clerics, which are in Dungeons and Dragons, but also in magic. Um, whenever a quick creature deals combat damage to a player, create a 4-4 gold dragon creature taking flying and roll a d20. If you roll a 20, then do that again. As in, create another 4-4 gold dragon creature taking flying and roll the d20 again. So if you keep rolling 20s, which is very unlikely, but you keep Creating four four little dragon creature code pictures, which is kinda of cool. The Grand Calcutron. I'm just gonna be reading all of these out because they're all awesome. Um, when it enters the battlefield, each player's hand becomes a program, an ordered row of revealed cards. Players can only play the first card of their program. If you if a card will be put into a player's hand from anywhere, like you draw a card, a player reveals it and places it anywhere within his or her program instead. At the beginning of each player's end step, if that player's program has fewer than 5 cards, he or she draws cards that equal to the difference. That's pretty cool. Um, here we get into our creatures. So this is the first of our host cards. So each host card has a bit over the side here. It says, when this creature enters the battlefield, and then, which is the trigger, and then a result. And each augment card covers over the trigger and changes the trigger to be something else. Um, and often has like a plus or minus to this power here. Um, so this one is just roll a six sided die, you gain life equal to the result. Pretty simple. And um, this one is you may destroy target non land permanent. Pretty grey. Uh, flying 4-4. Four, four. Um, but it costs 8. It's a little bit expensive. But hey, you get to destroy something. So, um, Baron Von Count is crazy. When it, it's, it enters the battlefield with a doom counter on five, as in this five right here. Whenever you cast a spell with the indicated numeral in its mana cost, or text box, like anywhere here, five, one, five, or power, or toughness, here, move the doom counter one numeral to the left. Doom. And the doom counter moves from one, destroy target. Flyer and put that doom counter on five. This is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> um, yeah, anything that says destroy target player is just crazy. Uh, this one is like the opposite of the cat, someone losing life instead of you gaining life. Um, destroy target artifacts, so that's quite nice. Um, discard a card if you do draw a card, so that's loot, I believe. It's I think it's like a reverse loot. So, this creature assembles a contraption, so I really shouldn't have that in the deck since I don't have contraptions. Um, opponent discards a card. Uh, 
Dr. Julius Jumblemorph. At the beginning I had this as my commander, but then I was like, oh, there's supposed to be an augment in other colours, and there's so many cool blue things in, the, in our stable. But here's every creature type. Whenever a host enters the battlefield under your control, you may search your library and or graveyard for a card with augment and combine it with that host. It's kind of crazy. Um, untap target permanent here. Earl of Squirrel. Here's Squirrel Link. Damage dealt by this creature also causes you to create that many 1 1 green squirrel creature tokens. He does 4 damage. You're creating 4 1 1 green squirrel creature tokens. Creature tokens you control are squirrels in addition to their other creature types. And other squirrels you control get plus 1, plus 1. Jeez. Um, this creature deals damage equal to the result to target creature and opponent controls over 6 target die roll. Again, more dice. Um, 1 1, call this name, artifact creature token. Yeah. He wants to mash up, this feels crazy. Um, combined, enchanted, and equipped creatures you control have mates. You pay 5, tap it. Put two target creature cards from graveyards, any graveyards, not just a graveyard, onto the battlefield combined into one creature under your control. Which is, again, kind of ridiculous. So half kitten, half something. Yes, and the trigger is now, whenever you're dealt damage, this happens. Um, and there's an augment cost associated with it, so it's kind of like an aura, if you want to think of it like that. It's not an aura, but it functions in that kind of similar um, space, if you like. Um, half orc, that gives a trample, and at the beginning of each end step, if an opponent was dealt damage this turn, trigger. At the beginning of your upkeep, trigger, also plus three, plus three. So, orc net six. Whenever a non-token creature ends the battlefield, pretty good, with minus one, minus zero. But hey, orc net cost of one. Oh man. Secretly note a word with six to eight letters. Pay one. Target player who doesn't control pain man guesses the noted word or an unguessed letter in that word. If they guess wrong, put a plus one plus one counter on him man. When a player guesses the noted word or all of its letters, sacrifice hang man. It's pretty great. When you attack whenever you attack with two more creatures, in flying. Or hydrodoodle. As it enters the battlefield, roll X, 6 out of dice. It enters the battlefield with a number of plus one plus one counters equal to the total of those results. That has reached and trample. It's pretty great. Infinity Elemental, plus 7. Infinite power. But 5, toughness. Um, so, you know, if it attacks something with more than 5 power, dies even though it has infinite power but if you give this dude trample it's ridiculous i don't have anything in here that gives stuff trample but i don't think first strike protection i think this is another one with multiple or multiple versions that has a lot a lot a lot of different versions actually um yeah uh, black robot return target host card or card with augment from your graveyard to your hand all right um draw a card is just good. Um, whenever something dies, put a number of plus one plus one counters on this creature equal to it as well. Again, crazy good. Multi headed. Yeah, okay, okay. At the beginning of each end step, if you roll the die this turn, 8 and plus 4 plus 4. That's ninja. You may activate ninja's augment ability anytime you could cast an instant. So you can just ninja her onto anything. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player. It's so crazy. Little six sided die, a target player puts the top X cards in his or her library, so it's mills for X. Which is kind of pretty cool. Uh, ordinary pony, you may exile target non horse creature you control and return them to the so it's a flicker. Which is interesting in why. Um, whenever this creature blocks, Plus one, plus four, heck yes. An artifact into the battlefield like a controls turn. Nice. Seven time. Whenever land into the battlefield, so landfall trigger. Yes. Which you can draw it, plus one, plus one. Nice. I don't know. But this one actually does.
it just has a five. Hmm. I guess you can also augment it again for five. Um, target creature can it controls get plus one and plus one times in. Cool. Um, again, search for augment. My target this control. Just rolling more dice. All dice. Um, and create creature tokens. Um, and also more, more dice. Use the total of those results. Right. Triple strike. Deals first strike, regular, and last strike combat damage. Last strike comes after regular. It's kind of crazy. Which is very cute. Impossible to turn to the creature. Landfall. Land drop. Let's just get lands. Combine some fight from your graveyard with target host. Exile creature. And then capital offense. It's minus X, minus X, and blue. And between the X is the number of times a capital letter appears in its rules text. Uh, so yeah, I just had fun putting this together. And I mean, there are so many other cards that I could put put in this, but I I kind of stuck to the, all the host and all cards, even though there's probably a couple that I could take out of here because I can't actually use them. Um, well, not probably, except for its creatures. Um, yeah, and then some cool things and cool dice things um, so yes that is this deck that probably took a lot longer um, it probably be actually terrible to play but the thing is because unstable kind of doesn't mix with anything um, you know it's not in standard it's not legal in commander it's super duper cheap so this deck except for the full art lands Light lands are super expensive, they're like over 10 bucks each. Um, yeah, super expensive. Um, but everything else is less than a dollar. Okay, um, yeah, sort of dungeon dragons is expensive. There we go. That's not surprising actually. Um, yeah, everything else is super cheap. Super cheap. Oh, there you go. You've been the element of a bit expensive. Yep, not surprising. Julius Jumping Wolf and Baron Von Count. Yeah, so the legendary creatures. Strange that. Um, they're not. Not the other one. Not Grisilda. Not. No, it's not Grisilda. Oh, shame. Um, just a bit crazy. But yes, so that is, that is this deck. Sorry. It, this one is probably going to be quite a bit longer than the last last one that I did. Um, but I hope you enjoyed that. Um, next time, I will probably have... Oh, like I said, I've got quite a few decks that I've still got to work through. Um, I'd probably really love to show you guys this one with all the gates. Um, yeah. I'd like to show you guys that. Um, or even maybe have a go at working, at showing how I build a deck. Um, maybe we'll see how we go. That will probably take a while. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you next time.